Hello and welcome back to my humble show. So, last week I talked about how Hillary Clinton had gone on CNN with Caitlin Collins and proclaimed that Donald Trump's Madison Square Garden rally was going to be a reenactment of a 1939 Nazi rally, which was also held at Madison Square Garden, not even in the same month. So no correlation, no causation there. Didn't stop her from saying such a thing. And of course, neither CNN nor Caitlin Collins stopped her. So that day has come and gone. Yesterday, Donald Trump spoke in front of a packed to the brim house. So packed, in fact, that the Harris Waltz campaign can't exactly claim that the crowd was leaving before it ended. Regardless, yeah. He spoke along with many other speakers. And it was so non Nazi that Democrats are left to complain about a joke which a comedian told about Puerto Rico instead. Yeah, that's right. Uh, people were not gassed up in the way that we were led to believe. Yeah, if you know what I mean. So, I'll get into the comedic elements of it and sure, poor taste, but considering how considering how it was such a Nazi-driven agenda, allegedly. Shouldn't we be shocked that nothing more sinister happened there? Well, I, I guess the Democrats will still claim that it was sinister simply because he was there. You know who else was there? Bill Clinton, back in 1992. So, the DNC took place in Madison Square Garden that year. And that's where uh, Bill Clinton was nominated, along with his his VP, um, Al Gore. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? How ironic that years later, Hillary Clinton is claiming that Donald Trump is reenacting Nazism simply by being there. Despite the fact that her own husband was there in that same location years earlier, along with many other politicians. It's nothing new. So yeah, it wasn't just Hillary Clinton who, who made that claim, by the way. After she made that, after she got that rhetorical ball rolling, Tim Walz went out on the campaign trail. This is the end of last week as well. And he echoed her sentiments about it being a reenactment of a Nazi rally. And then as the rally was taking place yesterday, with uh, many pro-Israel Magadonians uh, in the house, which is also ironic, MSNBC, for example, was uh, putting up footage of Nazis in order to manipulate people's minds into believing that there's no difference between Hitler and Donald Trump. As if. Seems a bit insulting to quite a few people. Like, millions? Yeah. And they think Donald Trump is rhetorically off-putting. Listen, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with him on that. I'm disagreeing with their responses to it. Never ceases to amaze me just how rhetorical they are in response to his rhetoric. And I guess I shouldn't even really call it rhetoric on their part. I mean, they really seem to believe that he's the second coming of Hitler. I think people were having a grand old time at Madison Square Garden yesterday, whether I agree with them on everything or not, but, okay, got to get through this narrow road. (sighs) 
Yeah. Having such a grand time that they called out a comedian named Tony Hinchcliffe, for better or worse. And I'll say a little bit more about him momentarily, but let me just say that I highly doubt Donald Trump even knows him personally. He hasn't spoken at political events before. He's usually running his show down in Texas, although he did. He did hold two shows in Madison Square Garden, I believe it was two, uh, just a little while back. So, there's that. But yes, he told a joke about Puerto Rico being an island of, of garbage <laughs> and some other jokes because he's a comedian. And I get it. Might not be the most tasteful thing right before an election. Might be uh, fodder or uh, fuel on the fire of the Democrats who are just looking for any narrative to spin. But come on. If that's the worst thing you got out of a supposedly Nazi rally, I did not see that coming. Actually, I believe Tony Hinchcliffe used that joke himself, so my apologies for uh, the plagiarism. Anyways, I uh, am aware of his, his show. I watch it sometimes. In fact, I watch it every week at this point. I didn't even know anything about him until a few months back, and I started watching his shows while listening to them. Whether I'm at work or doing the dishes at home, I just put it on and uh, have a laugh. So, if you, like me, are aware of what his show is all about, it's no surprise to you that he told jokes. You know? But I, I guess Democrats would like for it to be as bland as possible. And, and listen, I'm not necessarily condoning all of his his jokes, all of his remarks. I wouldn't tell all of them myself. I definitely wouldn't tell all of them myself when it when it comes to his actual show, Kill Tony. Which, once again, he, he runs down in Texas. It used to be in California, but he moved away from there, like so many other people, uh, during COVID, if I'm not mistaken. And he has described it as though he was moving from hell to heaven. So, no surprise that he has become more and more conservative over the years as he has been surrounded by more and more conservatives down in in Texas. So, with the whole cancel culture thing going on, he's obviously big on free speech. Uh, the Republican Party has been running on free speech, namely Donald Trump, because he says a lot of things that people on the left would like to cancel. So, of course, he's he's going to lean towards Trump on all of that. He's going to lean towards the Republican Party on all of that. The anti-cancel culture community. Then again, after this backlash, as if that was the most important part of the multi-hour-long rally which took place yesterday, the Trump campaign, though not Trump himself, has seemingly distanced itself uh, from the jokes of Tony Hinchcliffe. But again, they were jokes. Random note, somebody by the name of Billy Baldwin, I believe it was Billy Baldwin, <sighs> said something on, on X about how uh, Tony Hinchcliffe may be lucky to get out of New York City alive after the jokes he told. Okay, he was already in New York, as I previously mentioned. In Madison Square Garden, uh, running multiple uh, special edition Kill Tony extravaganzas, and many, many, many more offensive jokes were told at the behalf, or at least at the expense of uh, many groups of people, because that's how comedy works. And if he would have just been insulting white people or something, I, I suppose liberal media would have let it slide, but because 
it was Puerto Rico, which, by the way, he said on X afterwards. He goes there to vacation frequently. He loves to vacation there. That's what he said. So it wasn't meant to, to be taken quite so literally as it was. But I, I mostly just think that the Democrats are reaching for anything they can possibly take offense to since they they set such a a high bar or low bar. You know what I mean? In in regards to what to expect at this this rally. I mean there weren't public executions or anything like that. It was mostly just uh MAGA celebrities. You know, which I think is a little bit corny sometimes. Republicans like to mock any celebrity who who uh, endorses the Democrats. But then if a celebrity endorses the Republicans, they're all about that life. Well, Tony Hinchcliffe is, I guess, a perfect example of that because he's a bit of a celebrity hims himself. So he was invited to the party and the party wasn't ready uh, for the fun he was bringing. So I, I think it's a little bit foolish for the Republicans for the top of the ticket to try hard to denounce him, to try too hard to denounce him, uh, since you're you're kind of cutting against your own freedom of speech narrative if you do that. I mean, you have quite a cast of characters endorsing you and even traveling around campaigning for you. I mean, what about RFK Jr.? Heaven knows he's had his share of issues in his life. So if we want to just go back through the archives of, of someone's personal history and start looking for reasons to argue that they should not be anywhere near the Trump campaign, like, you can do that with just about anyone. <clears throat> you can do that with Democrats, too, because they definitely ain't saints. And, and in fact, they're increasingly... Secular, so I'm not sure what standard they're even going by or judging by these days. But yeah, Tim Walz had AOC on a little virtual uh, meetup with him, and they were complaining about the jokes with a straight face, making sure to take it as seriously as possible in order to act as offended as possible on behalf of everyone else who is also trying to act as offended as possible that a comedian told jokes. And let me let me just say something random about uh, Tim Walz. Him and his uh, valor-stilling self. So it was, it was kind of funny. Earlier today, he put out a post on X where he was praising AOC, whom he has apparently suggested should be the next Speaker of the House. He was saying, based upon his coaching experience, you know, he's all the time being touted as this coach. Well, he was saying that AOC could run a mean pick six and that he would call an audible <laughs> and something like that. So the problem is, Pick six is not actually a play. So he, being the coach he has been calling himself, being the coach that his entire party has been calling him, doesn't even know how football works, apparently. So he was called out for that, for making a knucklehead of himself, yet again. You know, self-proclaimed knucklehead that he is. And if I'm not mistaken, he deleted that post. So I'm going to check that out. But yes, I believe I saw where he deleted that post after making a knucklehead of himself yet again. So it's it's similar to how he went out hunting with a gun that he didn't even seem to know how to use in his brand new hunting gear uh, for the photo shoot, for the, for the photo op. And, you know, that happened just weeks ago, touting his... Uh, hunting skills, his hunting experience, and then lo and behold, he's got this shotgun in his hands, and he can't seem to figure out how to load it correctly, so he's he's bracing it directly on his crotch, which, 
you know, even an amateur like me, and I don't pretend to be anything but an amateur, even I know that something is off with that. Maybe he's not quite what he claims to be because it's a publicity stunt. It's all about perception. They're trying to win the masculine male vote, and so they've got him out doing all these masculine male things, like playing video games with AOC. Crazy Taxi or something like that. Playing old video games as though that's his his, his side hustle. You know, driving around a car and uh, doing almost nothing except for uh, donuts. And, and, you know, crashing. That's not, that's not really convincing to the hardcore gamers out there. Now, the Harris Walls campaign did hire an actual gamer to help them campaign just recently. That didn't go over well, so I guess he thought he would he would give it a shot himself. Now, maybe he does play video games on the weekend. Don't really know. Don't really care. My point is, this stuff is all meant to pander. The video game playing, the fake hunting in which he fired exactly zero shots, supposedly. <clears throat> uh, the, the video where he's working on oldie automobiles, all of that is just uh, pandering. They're trying to get votes of men because they know that they're not doing too well with men or comedians or funny people in general, despite being the campaign of joy, joy, which is almost all gone now that they uh, arrive at election day, nearing closer and closer to election day under the premise that they're uh, running against Adolf Hitler's uh, carbon copy. So yeah, not a lot of joy in that message, but hey, whatever works for them, I guess. But yeah, all these different approaches, all these different approaches that they're they're trying to win all these different attacks while simultaneously they claim that they're not the ones who are rhetorical. They're not the ones who are who are divisive. They're just bringing us all together by uh, outright claiming that this rally, Madison Square Garden, along with everyone who was there, are racists and bigots. That's what AOC literally claimed. She said verbatim that they're racists and bigots. Okay, what does that mean? That everyone in there, because they support Donald Trump, are racists and bigots. What does it say about half the voting population? That they're also racists and bigots. Simply because they, they support a man who was already in office for four years and did not rule with an iron fist. So, not exactly a compelling argument if you if you ask me. But hey, maybe not the smartest move for Republicans to have a comedian. I think that because Donald Trump is an entertainer himself, and he is, he is kind of in that uh, lane just a little bit, in the comedic lane that he he often merges into during his rallies and uh, now podcasts with different comedians that you know that he's been on. They're of course more and more enthusiastic about supporting him, so it's no surprise that at least one of them would want to uh, speak at his his rally in Madison Square Garden. <sighs> But yeah, I guess it's it's tricky, considering how uh, how many rakes there are to step on if you're if you're Donald Trump. Now, I'm not going to pretend that he wrote every word on the teleprompter for every person who spoke. This seems to be the suggestion coming from the left that uh, that he was directly responsible for every single word that was said during yesterday's event, where people simply shared opinions, as uh, Americans are supposed to be able to do. But no, the unifiers are so divisive that they would have us believe that every person there was a racist and a bigot, that everyone who is a Republican who's not voting for Kamala Harris like Liz Cheney, well, they're all racist and bigots as well. 
That's that's their message. So yeah, I think that's far more offensive than uh, anything Tony Hinchcliffe said. Whether you like him or not, he was joking. So the difference between his jokes and what the Democrats are saying is what they're saying is that they literally believe that half the voting population in America, in the United States, is garbage. That's their message. But that's somehow better? I don't think so. So that's that's why I am inclined to to shrug it off, to dismiss it. I didn't watch the whole thing. I just know what was going viral afterwards. And I watched Tony Hinchcliffe's full set of remarks. And I had a chuckle or two. I actually watched it before I even knew what people were taking offense to. So then I saw all the headlines afterwards. And like, I get it. It's no surprise when I heard it and some of the other jokes he told about black people and watermelons. All the other unoriginal jokes that you hear from comedians. Including black comedians, for that matter. There are plenty of black comedians who tell that sort of joke. There's probably Puerto Rican comedians who joke about Puerto Rico. I guess then, in that case, it's it's fine. I don't even know what Tony Hinchcliffe is. He looks like a stereotypical soy boy, if you ask me. But, hey, he's a dark humor comedian. Who is known for roasting people, like, I don't know, at the Tom Brady roast... So, there's that. There have been attempts to cancel him in the past. Lo and behold, someone just drove past me with a Harris Wall sticker on the back of their their SUV because I live in a neighborhood where I'm surrounded by Harris Wall voters and probably each and every one of them think that, that uh, well, maybe not each and every one of them, but most of them think that uh, there were a bunch of Nazis in Madison Square Garden this weekend. A bunch of a bunch of uh, pro-Israel Nazis. So yeah, that's what it's come to. And that's what we've come to. Listen, I'm not going to defend Trump on everything he says. I don't even particularly care to listen to most of his, his rallies because what others call entertaining, I just call obnoxious. I can only handle so much of it, but I listen to it just like I listen to Democrats because it's newsworthy. I feel like there were some other things I was going to add, but I'm at home sitting in the in the driveway. Need to go inside and enjoy at least half of my lunch break. I gotta try to get this uploaded before I go back to work. So it's not a day late and a dollar short. Oh, what else? What else? What else? What else? I'm sure I'll think of something later. 23 minutes into this. Uh, my wife is texting me. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. In case I didn't say it already, like, subscribe, and enjoy the ride. Keep in touch. Keep in tune. New content is coming soon. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Feel free to disagree with me. I'm sure many of you may. If anybody actually even watches this. We'll see. Peace.